We live at such a time when the threat of global hunger does not manifest itself in any way. Africa remains the only continent where news on this topic comes from periodically. Ironically, Egypt, which is predominantly occupied by the lifeless African desert, never gets into the headlines of such news of the mass famine. How do they do it? The epic mega-project that will make Egypt the largest fish producer on the continent and enhance food security in the country is featured in this video on the Innovative Text channel. Even though the fertile lands along the banks of the Nile occupy only 5.5% of the country's area, the harvest from these lands almost completely covers the population's need for food. However, not everything is so simple. Due to climate change and human activities, the waters of the Nile are less and less saturating arable land with fertile silt, which forces the Egyptians to use more chemical fertilizers. This in turn depletes the soil even more, reducing the area of pasture for livestock in arable land. In the face of such disappointing dynamics, the Egyptian authorities decided in the last century to diversify food sources and launched a large campaign to develop the fishing industry to provide the population with protein food. Before this, in the late 1970s, the government proposed the plan to accelerate the development of the sector. By the end of the reporting period in the mid-1980s, annual fish production had jumped from 17,000 tons to 45,000 tons. During this period, four large fish hatcheries, six fish farms, and five juvenile fish collection points were built. Thus, in a relatively short period of time, Egypt successfully diversified its food resources. At the same time, tens of thousands of people got jobs in the fishing sector, as employees and owners of private fish farms on land leased from the state. The rapid development of this industry has significantly reduced the cost of fish on the domestic market which made it affordable for the poorest segments of the population. Farmed fish have become the only source of protein in their diets for many poor people. Despite all the efforts made, Egypt has not been able to cover all of its domestic fish needs until recently. To solve this problem and go out for export, the government of the country initiated a project to build the Al Fayrouz Large Scale Fish Production Complex, 10 kilometers east of Port Said and 17.5 kilometers from the Mediterranean coast. The project to create a fish farm with an area of 11 football fields, which began in 2017, has been divided into two phases. At the first stage, preparatory work was carried out, including not only the study of the area, but also soil samples, analysis of rock, and measurements of water levels. But on the basis of this data, the striking scale project was developed, 700 ponds occupying more than 8,000 hectares, as well as docks measuring 120 by 80 meters, accommodating six fishing boats up to 30 meters long. For the construction of artificial reservoirs, it was required to excavate 500,000 cubic meters of soil, backfill 1.5 million cubic meters of rock, build artificial slopes with a length of more than 100 kilometers, and pour concrete on a surface of 7,000 square meters. Interestingly, the project included the creation of a whole complex of auxiliary structures that ensure self-sufficiency and autonomy of work. So, in addition to the ponds themselves, plants for fish processing, ice production, feed production and packaging, as well as a veterinary laboratory complex and birthing facilities were erected on the territory of the mega farm. By the way, several unique technologies were used in the construction of artificial ponds and supply channels. One of them was the use of geosynthetic materials for lining the bottom of reservoirs. A low permeability geomembrane placed between compressed sand and concrete has kept constant volumes of water in ponds and canals. Moreover, it has become a barrier against groundwater, which could theoretically pollute water in ponds. It is important that no chemical compounds were added to the composition of the geomembranes used that could wash out over time which was another step towards creating a highly environmentally friendly project. Technically, the Al Fayrouz fish farm is a complex of artificial ponds, which received desalinated seawater from the Mediterranean Sea and from the Fayrouz Salt Lake through canals. At the same time, the ponds are divided into several functional zones for breeding juvenile fish, growing adult fish and shrimps. It is expected that the new mega project will provide jobs for up to 10,000 specialists in various fields, and this will naturally improve the economic situation in the region. 
On the global scene, the Al Fabrus in the next 10 years will create a huge value added for the development of the Suez Canal, as well as the Sinai Peninsula as a result of the emergence of new industrial and urban settlements. But to an even greater extent, the Fish Megafarm will bring the Egyptian government's plans to provide the entire population of the country with affordable protein food by 2030, and will allow Egypt to export part of its products to the Middle East and Europe. There are all prerequisites for this. Al Fayrouz has already become the largest fish hatchery in Africa, overtaking lake harvest in Zimbabwe, which for a time was the largest aquaculture facility on the continent. Before the construction of the mega farm, Egypt was the eighth largest fish producer in the world. According to the government's calculations, the new project will increase production in the country by another 150,000 tons of fish per year. That is, by 7.5% to the already produced 2 million tons. Given that the country consumes about 2.4 million tons of fish products annually, the new project will make Egypt a self-sufficient producer and important exporter of fish in Africa and the Middle East. One more significant positive effect which lies in the plane of geo-economic interests must be pointed out. Before the construction of the mega farm, Egyptian fishermen often had to go further out to sea in search of a larger catch, which often led to the violation of the maritime borders of neighboring countries. The need to swim further from the coast was caused by the depletion of fish stocks in the coastal areas of the Mediterranean and Red Seas as a result of uncontrolled fishing. Illegal fishing in the seawaters of neighboring states often provoked conflicts and aggression. Such allegedly random visits of Egyptian fishing vessels were regarded by neighbors as extremely unfriendly, as encroachments on state natural resources. In that respect, the Al Fayrouz farm allowed to partially solve this problem and saved the Egyptians from the need to get into someone else's pocket in search of a large catch. Since ancient times to the present day, the inhabitants of Egypt had to literally get along with the desert that occupies most of the country. The Al Fayrouz project is a great example of how productive and inventive humanity can be in the search for new resources and sources of food that save millions of people from global hunger. But to an even greater extent, this project is a testament to how the state can and should take care of its citizens when it comes to food independence and the availability of food for all segments of the population. There are not so many such examples in the world, and Al Fayrouz really deserves applause to the Egyptian authorities, who have implemented such a unique project from scratch right in the middle of the desert. Who knows, maybe soon, Egyptian fish will appear on our tables.